This is the oral summary of the judgment of the Supreme Court in Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs against Howarth. Sometimes the amount of tax that a person has to pay can be very different depending on how you interpret the wording of a particular provision in the legislation that imposes the charge to tax. Taxpayers may enter into a tax avoidance scheme under which they organize their tax affairs in a certain way, and then they fill in their annual tax return on the basis that the way the legislation is worded means that there is less tax for them to pay than if you read the words in a different way. HMRC may disagree and tell the taxpayer that the tax avoidance scheme does not work because the taxpayer's interpretation of the legislation is not right. If HMRC's alternative way of reading the legislation is correct, the taxpayer's tax return is wrong and more tax would be due. HMRC will then use their powers to correct the tax return and demand the payment of more tax. When that happens, a taxpayer can appeal against HMRC's assessment and bring the matter before a court. The court may decide the issue in HMRC's favour and hold that the individual taxpayer must pay more tax because the correct interpretation of the legislation is as HMRC say, and that means that the tax avoidance scheme he has used is ineffective. That court ruling will not of itself prevent all the other taxpayers who entered into similar tax avoidance schemes from trying to rely on the interpretation of the legislation that has already been held to be wrong. Although those other taxpayers may expect to lose their case at the end of the day, they may still think that there is an advantage to them in trying to argue the point, because that can postpone by several years the day when they actually have to pay the extra tax. In 2014, Parliament introduced a new regime to discourage taxpayers from continuing to pursue such arguments when those arguments have already been rejected by a court deciding another earlier case. The regime in the Finance Act 2014 gives HMRC the power to issue what is called a follower notice to a taxpayer, telling him or her that an earlier ruling has already decided the point they're relying on against them. A taxpayer who receives a follower notice can still, if he or she wants, pursue an appeal despite that earlier ruling. But if HMRC are proved right and the court finds again that the tax avoidance scheme is ineffective, HMRC can impose a penalty on the taxpayer so that they not only have to pay the tax due, but an additional amount as a penalty that might be up to half that tax again. The taxpayer in this case, Mr. Howarth, wanted to avoid paying tax on some shares that he was going to sell and which had increased greatly in value in the years since he first bought them. Normally, he would have to pay tax on the capital gain that he made when he sold the shares. However, he thought that he could take advantage of a double taxation treaty that this country has with Mauritius. He filled in his tax return on the basis that, that because of the way that the double taxation treaty applies, in combination with the wording of the capital gains tax legislation here, he did not have to pay any capital gains tax. HMRC's view was that that is not how the legislation and the treaty with Mauritius works. HMRC also thought that the Court of Appeal had already decided this point in their favour in an earlier case called Smallwood against HMRC, where the facts were similar to the facts of Mr. Howarth's situation. HMRC therefore issued a follower notice to Mr. Howarth, telling him about the Smallwood case and saying that that judgment showed that his tax avoidance scheme did not work. He was told that he must either agree to pay capital gains tax or risk having to pay a penalty if he continued to argue with them and the court ultimately found that HMRC were right all along. Mr Howarth challenged the issue of the follower notice to him in the High Court by way of judicial review. He argued that Parliament has set strict conditions that must be satisfied before a follower notice can properly be issued. 
and he said that one of those conditions was not met in his case. He pointed to evidence that HMRC put before the court, describing the discussions held by the committee within HMRC, which decided to issue follower notices to him and to other taxpayers following or relying on the Smallwood ruling. He said, and HMRC accepted, that that evidence showed only that the people on the committee thought that it was likely that the Smallwood case would lead to the same result in Mr. Howarth's case. He said that it is not enough that HMRC think it is likely. The statute requires that HMRC have to form the opinion that the Smallwood case would provide the answer in Mr. Howarth's case as well. The Supreme Court today unanimously decides that the opinion formed by HMRC in Mr. Howarth's case did not satisfy the test laid down by Parliament. The follower notice must therefore be quashed. In deciding how strictly the conditions set by Parliament should be interpreted, we bear in mind that the follower notice regime is intended to restrict a taxpayer's constitutional right to bring their dispute to court. It is true that the regime does not actually prevent taxpayers from continuing to pursue their appeal, but the risk of having to pay a very large penalty is a strong discouragement. That means that the wording of the legislation has to be interpreted so as to reduce the interference with those rights of access to justice to a minimum that is consistent still with achieving the goal that Parliament wanted to achieve by enacting the regime. We have explained in our judgment the kinds of factors that HMRC should take into account when deciding whether to issue a follower notice. The court also finds that HMRC's committee made some other mistakes in its analysis of the judgments in the earlier Smallwood case and exaggerated to some extent what that case had decided. However, the court rejected Mr. Howarth's argument that the follower notice issued to him was invalid because it did not include the information that the statute says must be included. Although we find that the follower notice should have included more information, that defect was not serious enough to make the whole notice invalid. Overall, we therefore dismiss the appeal. The court is now adjourned.